Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen of the Underworlds community to this review of the Malevolent Masks. Before we get going, make sure to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, feel free to click the thanks button and leave a comment on your thoughts on the rival deck at hand. So let's start as always with the searches, let's take them in, in alphabetic order. So first up we have Audacious Aspect, it's a search hybrid, scored immediately after an activation step. If one or more friendly fighters with a mask upgrade holds an objective with an odd value, so that's 1, 3 or 5, or potentially if you're playing into Paths of Prophecies to manipulate the value, you could be standing on at least originally other numbers as well. But I think the other part here is probably why you would take this card. Or your warband holds two or more objectives, each of which is in no ones or enemy territory, so that's a pretty solid card for especially like larger warbands. It's a bit like... Uh, I can't remember the name of the card, but there was this like two feature token search like mm -hmm, in the dark something. I think the, the, the second part of the card is the more reliable one. The first one can be tricky to pull off early on and I think all cards basically should be kind of judged well not all but but more or less you should be able to score the brunt of your cards in the first phase because yeah otherwise you're just having a very brick deck and I, I don't I don't think that's very appealing so I think it's very decent for the second part but you probably will want to play a war that has at least four fighters then next up we are looking at the card called death's visage it's a search hybrid as well you score it immediately after a friendly fighter with a mask upgrade takes an enemy fighter out of action so that's also a bit of a hard card in the first run obviously unless you're stacking your deck very full of these mask upgrades and even then you can't really guarantee that you are getting any there are a bit of it like a draw tech in the deck that could help uh, you access mask upgrades earlier on but that also requires you to draw those cards so let's see the other part of this hybrid card reads your warband's third or subsequent successful attack action in the same phase there is like one or two out of sequence attacks in the deck but i don't think that's enough to really help you get enough attacks off to score that part reliably enough i think three successful attacks are pretty hard we have a couple of like your fourth attack Attack without needing successes. Uh, Hexbane has one, for example. I think didn't also the new orcs have one? I think that's just way more reliable. Even if you are playing a really like accurate team, say like I mean Domitans or Drippers or yeah, even like Steelhearts, three successful attacks could be a really tall order actually. So I think uh, yeah, I think actually I think the first part is rather more appealing here, but even that is not all that appealing even i mean if you're leaning heavily into the mechanic you will sooner or later kill someone while wearing a mask upgrade especially since one or two of them gives you added like damage or accuracy dominus dominance is the next one that's a mouthful search no hybrid score this immediately after a power step so either yours or the opponent's if one or more surviving inspired friendly fighters have a mask upgrade this also obviously requires you to lean a bit hev more heavily into the the theme of the deck and you would probably be looking at a team that reliably inspires ec something that just inspires automatically in one or the of the rounds like i mean the idoneth warbands something that starts inspired like the uh, exile dead or like i mean iron skulls just run through a lethal x and you're good uh, like we see in the picture so kind of depends on the warband i think and you also have to draw the masks so yeah it is what it is i guess next up we have feast of violence such so duel scores immediately after friendly fights attack action if that was the third or subsequent range one or range two attack action made by a friendly fighter in the same phase and each of those attack actions was made in a different activation step so you can't score all of them with a single scything attack but i think that's all that's pretty nice that's quite it's, it's pretty reliable you don't need to succeed three attacks uh, could certainly be pulled off irregardless of warband size i think so that's actually pretty good and then we have slaughter satisfied which is scored immediately after an activation step if there are more enemy fights out of action then there are surviving enemy fighters that's obviously not very easy to i guess meta is not towards playing horde warbands holding objectives so i mean it could certainly be scored i mean if you meet a five man warband you need to kill three and if you meet a four man warband you also have to meet three and those fighters would generally speaking be harder to kill than those in the five-man warband but yeah uh, so yeah 
as I said, I've said so many times before, it's going to be very matchup dependent. Next up, we have Vision of Success, and this is the last search card in the deck. Search hybrid scores immediately after an activation step. If a friendly fighter with a mask upgrade holds an objective with an even value, uh, or your robot holds three or more objectives, one or more of which are in no one's and or enemy territory. So if you're looking to score the second part, you're probably playing something like Sepulchral Guard, uh, not Exile Dead because you need to hold them, but like uh, Sarbax Gates or any really big, I mean, even like Grimwatch or something. It could be pretty decent for certain warbands, I guess. It's just one glory for holding three, so it's not as good as like the Infection. Two glory search, obviously, for, for Grimwatch, but but uh, and it's, it's like a, a good extra glory for doing the same thing, I guess. So let's check the end phases. First up, we have completed pact scores in an end phase if there are more surviving friendly fighters with mask upgrades than there are surviving enemy fighters. Yeah, as I've said before, it's it's gonna be very matchup dependent here. You probably need to kind of play fully into the mask upgrades, I guess, and probably have fighters that can be resurrected as well to, to reliably know that they will still be on the battlefield. Uh, and so this is probably a late game I mean, if you score this early on, you're really doing well, and then you're probably winning anyway. So, it's probably only scorable on a really large warband, and even so, you need to also be pretty aggressive, while also protecting your fighters with masks. So, it could probably be pretty hard, but not impossible. Then we have Hooded Strain, your scores in an phase if one or more friendly fighters with a mask upgrade are in enemy territory. When you score this objective, if there are no enemy fights adjacent to one or more of those friendly fights, gain one additional glory point. I, I rather like this one. Getting a masked fight with an upgrade into enemy territory is pretty easy, I guess. And uh, with some push deck or just some luck or smart play, I guess. Or if you just take the last activation, I guess. Uh, the second part is also pretty, pretty easy, right? So um, it's a very reliable one glory and fairly reliable two glory even. So uh, it's pretty good. Reads more like a two glory card for me. Uh, then we have solid spread scores in end phase. If there are one or more friendly fighters in your territory, no one's territory and enemy territory. This is, we've seen this card before. That's pretty hard unless you have a lot of fighters. And even so, it could probably be a bit of a hassle to pull off. You probably will want to have at least one objective in no man's land to make it more appealing to take this card, I guess to kind of pair it off with other stuff you're scoring. Uh, but for something like Sepulchred God that can pull off several moves or like Sarbex Gits or whatever, it's probably very doable. I'm thinking also like uh, Exile Dead here with all those moves, but it's just one glory for a lot of work, I guess. So I'm not very impressed. Stoic Appearance scores in NFS if one or more friendly fights with a mask upgrade or holding an objective. Yeah, that's pretty easy, I guess. Um, not terribly interesting card, uh, but probably something that will be happening. I mean, you will probably need to take at least three or four mask upgrades in the deck to reliably score it. Then we have, then we have totally overpowered. Duel scores in end phase if your warband holds two or more objectives, and more than half of the fights in one or more enemy warbands are out of action and or have one or more wound counters. There are a good, a, a fair amount of ping damage in the game right now, especially if you are playing like into the spell decks or, or just the spell caster warbands, I guess. But it's still, I mean, if you're meeting a smaller warband, which seems to be the case most of the time, I guess, uh, it's pretty doable. I, I kind of like this card. It's not, I mean, holding two is fairly easy, I guess. And the second part is not an auto score, but it's easy enough to be appealing for two glory, I guess. Then we have a Victorious Veils, scores in an end phase if three or more surviving friendly fights each have a mask upgrade. When you score this objective, if it is the third end phase, gain two additional glory points. I mean, if you score it in the first end phase or even in the second, you're really doing well. So I think it's kind of weird that it's Maybe it should actually be the other way around, I guess. <laughs> you, should be, you should be getting the three glory if you score it in the first end phase. But then it's more luck than anything else. I mean, you're basically taking it as a third end phase card, right? Three or more surviving friend fights, a mask upgrade. I think you're looking to play something that raises fighter, like Squitch or something, to reliably, not even then it's reliable, but more, I guess. Or Exile Dead, to be able to raise fighters with mask upgrades. And there are, are a bit of a shenanigans with swapping mask upgrades and stuff like that in the deck. It's it's not impossible. You will play it as a third end phase, so it's gonna be a little bit of brick in your deck. I don't think it's terribly appealing, but it's not awful. I'm being very diplomatic here in my opinions today. Let's go over the uh, gambits as well. 
First up we have Funneled Soul Stuff. You can heal one each friendly fighter with a mask upgrade. Deal one damage to each other friendly fighter. It's a bit rough that you train heal for damage. I I've never really been impressed with heal, especially not heal one. I mean, if you're playing Il Ilthoris Guardian, it could be another card that inspires them, I guess. But I'm gonna say pass on that one. I mean, if you're playing Elite Warband, where everyone has a mask upgrade, I guess it's fine. But otherwise, I... And if you're playing a Horde Warband, uh, where a lot of fi fights have mask upgrades, you don't really need it, because your fights will be one-shotted anyway, so I don't really see the appeal with this card. A Hooded Rush, choose a friendly fighter with one or more upgrades, push the Chosen Fighter one hex. If the Chosen Fighter has a mask upgrade, you can push the Chosen Fighter up to two hexes instead. Yeah, that, that seems pretty fine. I mean, it's it's not a terribly hard condition to me to have an upgrade on a fighter. Especially for warbands that can play upgrades for free, like Hexpens Hunters or whatever. I mean, you'll probably pull off the second part there with two, two hexes as well pretty easily. So I think that's fine and probably a very necessary card to take. Then we have Maskborn, choose a friendly fighter with a mask upgrade that is out of action. Place the chosen fighter on a starting hex in your territory. The chosen fighter then makes one action. After the following search step, the chosen fighter is taken out of action. When the chosen fighter is taken out of action in this way, they have no bounty. So at least you don't get punished twice for them dying twice. That's good. And I mean, depending on what action you do, it could really swing the game majorly in your favor. And if you're in a position where you have no fighters left and you really need to kill one more fighter to score a plethora of end phase cards by doing that one important attack, this could really skewer the, the, the glory in the game. So I think it's it's a very niche card, but it's a very fun design. I really like that card. It's not always going to be amazing, but I mean, there are several scenarios I can think of uh, that could really make this card very powerful. If you really need to raise a fighter that you need to have alive, and say you have a mask upgrade on a leader that can raise other fighters, you can pull them back onto the board to raise another fighter. I mean... There are several scenarios I can think of that is really powerful with this card, uh, so I like it. Then we have Possessive Crouch, choose a friendly fighter, give the chosen fighter a guard token. If the chosen fighter has a mask upgrade, stagger each fighter adjacent to the chosen fighter. Um, I'm not terribly impressed with guard tokens generally. I mean, if you are on multiple defense dice, a guard token can obviously be, be quite powerful, especially if you're playing something like... Uh, the, I mean, Skitter Chanks with a defensive upgrade and there and you are guarded with three defense dice, that's pretty crazy. Uh, but most of the time, guard doesn't really do all that much, I guess. If the Chosen Fighter has a mask upgrade, stagger each fighter adjacent. So you could uh, potentially set up a very accurate, like, scything attack or something like that, but that also requires you to be adjacent before your activation, which is kind of a rare case, I guess. I'm not terribly impressed, I guess. I mean, a guard token is always useful, obviously, so it, it's not like you are risking anything by taking the card. It's probably just, in like a championship game, you probably wouldn't take the card because you could take a lot more powerful stuff, but yeah. Uh, revealed Aspect. Pick one, draw one power card, or... <laughs> <laughs> Choose a friendly fighter, including fighters who are out of action with one or more upgrades. Add one of those upgrades to your hand, then give the chosen fighter one upgrade from your hand or power discard pile. Do not spend any glory points when you do so. So either a very, very simple option or a very lengthy one here. I mean, there are several cases where you really need to be alive with a specific upgrade uh, or have mask upgrades on surviving fighters. I mean, it could really be a very important card. It, it's a bit of a brainy card. It could really make a huge difference in the game. I think uh, I really like that one. That one and Maskborn, I'm, I'm really a fan of. Scrabble in the dirt, pick a gambit with a malevolent masks symbol in your power discard pile. Add that card to your hand and discard one power card. It's not as useful in a championship deck then because you need to pick a gambit with the malevolent mask symbol specifically so either if you play this one in rivals or lean very heavily into it in in a nemesis format uh, it's a bit meh that you need to discard another card i guess i'm not overly impressed shattering violence user friendly fighter stagger the chosen fighter plus one dies with the first range one or range two attack action made by the chosen fighter in the next activation if the chosen fighter has a mask upgrade you can re-roll one attack dice in the attack roll of that fighter's first attack action made in the next activation so you don't get re-rolls for every attack uh, in a scything sequence so, uh, that's too bad i mean you will have i mean plus one dice is always nice so even if you don't lean heavily into the the deck it's still useful there are better like plus dice cards obviously but plus one dice never hurts and the second part is a nice little bonus 
it's not amazingly powerful, but it's still very nice. Accuracy is always king in my book. Taking over, choose a friendly fighter with a mask upgrade that has an action on that mask's upgrade, which there are like four or five that do, I think. We'll get to it. The chosen fighter makes that action. Uh, that's pretty nice because there are several like powerful actions on those cards, but the downside is that it requires an action. So it's like plus one dice or plus one damage or whatever. And it's really a, a, a letdown that you have to spend one of your few activations to do it. So this is a nice bonus here. I, I, I kind of like this one. Kind of mitigate some of the, the downsides of the uh, mask upgrades here. Unexpected arrival. Choose two friendly fights with mask upgrades. Place each fighter in the hex that was occupied by the other fighter when you chose them. I don't really like this one. A is not very good in the first round. Uh, having... Mask upgrades on two fighters, even though there are a bit of a draw tech in the deck. It's pretty rare, and even in the second round it could be kind of a, a reach, I guess. And then you should also have like a use for the card. I probably wouldn't take this card. Unveiled Ambitions. Uh, search your power deck for a mask upgrade. Reveal that card and add it to your hand. Then shuffle any remaining cards in your power deck. So I just spoke about there being a bit of a draw tech here. So I, the nice thing here is that you don't need to like take the first mask upgrade that you find, which we have seen like similar cards say before, like search your deck until you find a specific uh, symbol or whatever. That's pretty nice. Helps uh, get those vital mask upgrades out, but it's only really useful if you lean heavily into the, the deck. Otherwise it's not really uh, useful. All right. So let's get to the, the meat of the matter, then the uh, upgrades, which includes the mask upgrades. But the first one actually is not a mask upgrade. Uh, it's called Dark Humor. You can reroll one defense dice in this fighter's defense row, uh, like Champion's Fortitude, I guess. If this fighter has a mask upgrade, you can make the following reaction. Mocking Laugh. It sounds like a D&D &D spell, I guess. A reaction uses after an attack action the target that this fighter... If this fighter's defense will contain one or more critical successes, push the attacker one hex. I think that, that part is pretty situational. I don't think it's terribly useful, this card. It, it, it's... The reroll from defense is like... It's good for fighters that have like damage mitigations on specific symbols like Wormsbat or the uh, Griselle's Arena, but probably more worm spat obviously since shields are more likely to roll than dodges it doesn't hurt but it's not terribly powerful then we have displacing figurine action pick an objective in an empty hex place this fighter on the objective you picked give this fighter one charge token then break this card and since it's not a mask upgrade i don't think the action is amazing i mean if you need to like for example like the fighter depicted on the the card art here uh, they have like they need to hold on both sides of the of the board but the charge is crap and then you need to destroy the card as well um i mean if you have really bad movement i guess but otherwise you're probably better off just charging so yeah not not a fan then we have envy's shroud and uh, the color of envy is obviously green which we see in the card art here Ma this is a mask upgrade plus one wound uh, which is it's okay uh, but I think it's less so now that we have large fighters already on five wounds and some stuff doesn't work with large fighters. So I think the power of the plus one wound card has lessened. When you give this to a fighter, if that fighter has other upgrades, break those cards. So that's pretty rough. You cannot give this fighter upgrades other than mask upgrades. Not a fan. Unless you really need to have masks, I don't think it's a good trade-off with yes, plus one wound and not being able to have any other upgrades. I don't think that the single wound is worth it. Menacing posture of this fighter's action that pushes one or more enemy fighters. Push this fighter one hex towards one of those fighters. I guess that could be an I mean an attack action that pushes one. Uh, then you could push after them to I mean if you're kind of driving someone back from an objective and then you're pushing onto the objective. It's pretty specific. There are other better like push cards especially if you're playing championship. It's certainly useful. It's a bit sad that you have to push towards the fighter. Could be more universal in its specification, I guess. It's neither yay or nay, I guess. Then we have the Echo Guys. Okay, guys. Mask. When a fighter has two mask upgrades, break one. So you can't have more than this one, then. Reverberating Call. 
action. Pick two feature tokens, one of which this fighter is on. Place each feature token in the hex the other feature token was in when you pick them. Rolls of double supports or successes in this fighter's defense roll until the end of the round in which this action is made. Could be really useful if you're playing, leaning into like paths of prophecy as well, or just a specific hold number or whatever, like if you need to hold the value 9 with like the FLM Spanimonium, you could trade an objective that an uh, enemy has with something that you have. Okay, so you have also like extra success in defense, but you also need to have done the action then to get that very slight defensive buff. Obviously also stronger if you're rolling 2 or 3 defense dice. It could be obviously very powerful in the right scenario. It's pretty situational though. The Eternal Smile, kind of disturbing card art here with <laughs> Lady Harrow or whatever it is in the, it's like rotten pumpkin smile kind of a deal. Uh, <laughs> when a fighter has two mask upgrades, break one, uh, Rictus of Carnage action, plus one damage to this fighter's range one and range two attack actions other than scything attack actions until the end of the round. So with that ploy card we mentioned earlier, you could do, for example, this one for free, which is obviously very powerful, and then you have plus one damage for the round. And then especially for like Voltron type fighters that are kind of uh, bearing the weight of the entire warband on their shoulders. Uh, this could be a very powerful combo. It kind of sucks that you have to do an action. It's like the sharpening of the blade. But you don't need to be adjacent to another fighter to do it. It's pretty powerful in the right circumstance. Next up we have the Frostbitten Veil mask. When a fighter has two mask upgrades, break one. Power search action. You can re-roll each dice in this fight's attack roll until the end of the round, which could obviously be amazing on like Tooth Dagger or anything like rolling three or four dice. I mean, especially paired with something like you have successes on both symbols or whatever. I mean, it could be amazingly accurate, but it's an action. But if you're in the late later stages of the game where you kind of like sizing your opponent up for one final attack, uh, it could be well worth to do it. Or if you're, as I said, playing uh, like a Voltron type, like Molog or Kanan or whatever, where you really need to not involve the other fighters as much, you could probably live with spending an activation doing this. But normally you wouldn't want to spend one of your few activations or one action such as this. It's, it's, I mean, it's pretty much like, like the horn action with Cortain, so yeah. Uh, potentially very powerful. Probably the most powerful of these ones so far. The Howling Hood Mask. When a fighter has two mask upgrades, break one. Abyssal Howl action. Choose a fighter adjacent to this fighter. Push the chosen fighter up to two hexes, then stagger the chosen fighter. Yeah, pushing two could be very powerful. Is it worth spending an action on? It really depends, obviously. It's my boring and diplomatic answer to that. Then we have unassailable stance. Minus one defense to minimum of one. Rolls of shields and dodges or successes in this fighter's defense rolls. Yeah, so it's not really something you play if you're playing a multiple defense die warband, but it's obviously pretty good otherwise. Uh, if you don't have anything to lose from having minus one defense, it's pretty useful, but it's mo more useful for like a one dodge warband than a one shield, obviously. I don't think it's strong enough to include in a more competitive format though. Then the last one is called Vitrix's Eye, with, which is also a mask. When a fighter has two mask upgrades, break one. Piercing Stare action. This fighter makes the following attack action. That's kind of weird. So it piercing stare action, which then makes... Couldn't it just be printed as an attack action? Yeah, I guess it's worse because you can't charge and do it then. It's pretty weird though. Uh, three range, two hammers, one damage with Grievous and Cleave. It's a pretty decent range attack, so probably useful inclusion for like range one warbands. Not really useful for anything else, I guess. Unless you're really playing into the whole mask meta which I don't think will be really a thing. Okay, so that's it. What do I make of this? It feels like a bit of a mess, I guess. Yeah, there are certainly pretty powerful cards. I probably won't play it that much, I think. I'm not really sure what Warband suits it. I mean, there are probably several Warband that could make use of some of the cards, especially, as I said earlier, like some Voltron-type Warbands could make use of some of the powerful cards, but that feels more something that you would, like, include in in a championship format, then you probably need to have a pretty solid own deck to to lean into this one in Nemesis, I guess. So I, I'm not sure it will be that popular. It's not awful, but it's 
just a bit weird, I guess. There are some really, really strong cards, like the one where you swap an upgrade with an out of uh, action fighter, and the one where you get to come back and do one action and die again. Um, and some of the upgrades was also, they were also really strong. I think like the whole two search was pretty decent, and hold an even objective with a mask. Dude is also pretty decent as well, right? So there are some 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 pretty solid stuff, but overall, bit of a weird one. I don't really mind that. Uh, would I have been more happy seeing a really strong rival deck? Probably not. I think um, when we saw like the Fearsome Fortress come out, I think it was a bit boring personally because it felt a bit like this will be the one people play for a really long time. It's got a lot of really strong passive glory and there's really no need to play anything else. I just hope people will play it anyway, I guess, even if it's not that strong. I love seeing people make use of lesser strong decks and make something out of it, but I personally think it will be more popular in championship with a select few cards from this one, um, paired with some goodies from other uh, Universal Rival decks, rather than in the Nemesis format. So, But that's it for me today. Uh, the end credits will roll soon. Take care. Bye. This is Mats again, chiming in to thank you for watching the video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like and comment. And to not miss out on future content, ring the bell as well. And if you really like this video, feel free to click the thanks button just below this video. And if you want to support me even further, you can now become a channel member and claim the title of Critical Focus Fan. Until next time, take care. Bye.